Hello, um, I'd like to talk to you, if I can, just for a few minutes about um, a piece of work, a piece of research that we would like you to get involved with if this interests you. So that you don't have to do this, you don't have to get involved, but I hope you do after I've spoken to you for the next few minutes. So what we would like you to, to, to listen to about is, is getting involved and helping us do some work that finds out whether doing exercise oh no not exercise but doing exercise is going to be beneficial to your health so that's your fitness and whether it's also going to be beneficial to your um, thinking so does it make you for example feel happier does it make you feel um, that you can answer questions more rapidly so we want to just find out about the way it affects what we call your physical and your cognitive health your mental health so what's this involved? What are we going to do? Well, let's find out, think about why we are doing this. Well, we know very little about people like you. We know very little about people with Down syndrome and about how beneficial exercise could be. We don't really understand about whether doing exercise that um, people who haven't got Down syndrome works in a, in, in, in a population or a person like yourself. So we want to find that out. But we also want to find out whether it's actually beneficial to your mental health. Does it help you in terms of your mind and your brain? Does it help you with decision making and, and choices and so on? So we want to look into this because we think and, and we think um, and we hope you think that this is a really important piece of research to carry out. So who are we? Well, that's me with the white hair. So my name is Dr. Dan Gordon, um, and I am talking to you at the moment from Cambridge in the United Kingdom. So I'm a long, long way from where you, you are living. I am a what is called a physiologist. So I work in the field of sport and exercise. So I've been doing this for about 20 years and I have done research um, in the past with people with Down syndrome looking at exercise such as skipping and jogging and, and, and so on. The person on the right is Vivian Mersbach. Now Vivian is what we call a research assistant and she is going to be the person if you get involved in the study that you'll have the most contact with you won't really hear much from me you'll hear mostly from Viv through emails and text messages and so on as you go through the study she's lovely um, but her role is really to make sure that everything is going swimmingly and that everything is is fine in terms of what the study is meant to be doing so why do we want to work with you? What is it about you that makes us interested in you? Well, the first thing is you've got Down syndrome. OK, and we really want to work with you. And we're looking for anybody with Down syndrome who is older than 18 years old, but no older than 45 years old. So we've kind of got this range of people we want to work with. You have to have either a tablet like an iPad or a phone like an iPhone or an Android or a computer that you can use because a, a lot of what we're going to do is going to involve you using a tablet a phone or a computer you don't need them all just one um, it's going to involve you using that to answer some questions and to do some tasks as we go through the study also, we need to make sure that you are fit and healthy. So we will ask you to fill in a questionnaire about your health. So it's just finding out a little bit about you. You can have as much help with filling that in as you want. So whether you want mum and dad to help you, whether you want a friend to help you, a support worker, a carer, that's absolutely fine. But it's, it's just so that we know a little bit about you in terms of do you fit what we're looking for in terms of the of the study. How many people like you are going to be in the study? Well, hopefully around about 200 people. So it's a big study. 
that you're getting involved in. So that's really cool in terms of a lot of people and giving us a lot of information. But do you have to help us? He looks a bit grumpy, doesn't he? He's oh. No, you don't. If you don't want to do this, you do not have to do it. And even if you start the study, and you do start, and you decide you don't want to carry on, you don't have to carry on. You can stop at any point. And you don't have to tell us why you've chosen to stop. You can just stop. We want you to do it, of course. But don't feel that you have to do it. And don't feel that you carry on even if you're not enjoying it. We want you to get enjoy this, and hopefully you will enjoy it. Um, but you can stop if you want to stop. So what are you going to do if you're in the study? Well, what we want to do is we want you to do, at the beginning, a little exercise test for us. All you're going to do is you're going to go for a walk for six minutes. You're going to walk outdoors for six minutes. So we want you to go somewhere that is safe, a bit like you can see here, maybe on a pavement or in the park or around where you live and just walk as far as you can in six minutes and we will record that information. I'll tell you in a minute how we record it. We're then going to ask you to use your tablet or your phone or your computer to answer some questions and we're going to be getting you to do a little bit of thinking and it's a little quiz and there's questions about what you see and about what you hear. Once we've done all of that, we're going to put you into one of four different groups. So we will pick which group you go into. You may go into a group who just does the walking or the jogging exercise. You may go into a group who just does what we call brain training exercise. Or you may go into a group who does the brain training and the walking exercise. Or you may go into a group that doesn't do either, that does nothing. So what will you do? Well, if you're in the walking group, we're going to ask you to walk or jog. We'll work that out with you three times a week for 30 minutes for eight weeks. So that's three days a week. You can pick which days you do it. Three days a week for 30 minutes for eight weeks. If you are in the brain training group, you can see the brain here lifting weights. If you're in the brain training group, we're going to ask you on your tablet or your phone or your computer, we're going to ask you to play some games. And they are games which are designed to get you to watch stuff or listen to stuff for 20 minutes a day. So that's 20 minutes a day. And you'll do that for six days and then stop and then start again. And you'll do that for eight weeks. That's 20 minutes a day for eight weeks. It's not too bad, is it? If you're in the walking and the brain training group, then you will do the walking three times a week for 30 minutes for eight weeks and the brain training of 20 minutes a day for six days a week for eight weeks. If you're in the group that does nothing, then you don't do anything at all. Once you've done all of this, so we've done all the eight weeks, we will ask you to do the six minute walking test again and the brain training quiz again. So you'll do those at the start and at the end. And that's it. So it's eight weeks, just eight weeks of you doing either some walking, some brain training, maybe both, maybe nothing. So it's eight weeks long, okay? So two months. You can, when you go and do your walking or your jogging, for some of you, maybe jogging, depends on, on where we start you. 
you can go and do this with a friend you can go do, do this with a buddy you can do this with whoever you want to do it but we want you to do it somewhere that is safe we want you to do it somewhere that you know ideally with pavements or in the park but it needs to be outdoors okay so not on a treadmill or not in a gym and gyms aren't open at the moment but not in gyms outdoors getting some fresh air and and and, and doing that work and if you're doing your, your your 20 minutes a day brain training you do it at home on your computer or your or your tablet okay for eight weeks what do we do with all of this information once you've been involved and you've done it what are we going to do with it well the first people that are going to have a look at this and it, it's all the data from all 200 people is we're going to give it to the Canadian Down Syndrome Society so they are helping and with this study because they want to know about the benefits of exercise and they want to know about the benefits on your your physical fitness and your mental fitness so that we're going to kind of show them all the data now we will not show them your name we will not show them you they won't know it's you so there is no way that they will know that it's your data so don't be worried about that we will not be showing them any personal information it's just what scores everybody produced in the study we're also going to give that information to a group called FCB Toronto. Now they are a marketing company and they are working with the Canadian Down Syndrome Society to market this. In other words, to, to show the benefits of doing exercise. They're going to create adverts and they're going to create um, posters and leaflets to help promote the benefits of exercise to people with Down Syndrome in Canada. So you're going to be helping the Down Syndrome Society in Canada. And then the final group that are going to use your scores is my university. So I am based, as I said, in Cambridge in the UK at a university called Anglia Ruskin University. And we will write your data up. Again, we won't put your name in it at all. We'll write your data up for science so people in science can understand how people with down syndrome benefit from doing exercise so that is who is going to get access to the data that we produce now you may have been thinking how are we going to know what you've done well we are going to send you if you agree to be in the study a fitbit like the one you see on the screen here and the Fitbit, you may, you may already know what these are, but it's like a watch and you wear it on your wrist and it allows us to record um, heart rate and it allows us to record distances and speeds and so on. And we're going to ask you to wear this all the time. All the time. And we're going to ask you to particularly wear this when you do your exercise tests for us if you go walking or so on and that is going to provide us with the information on how well you are doing when you are exercising however you get to keep the Fitbit okay so there's a little um, prize almost for this you get to keep the Fitbit it's a way of thanking you for being involved in the study so you get involved and the Fitbit we send you is yours to keep but we need you to wear it as much as you can we've got to charge it and we'll send you the information and explain how to do all of this but we will show you all of it but we want you to wear it when you are doing all the exercise that we want you to do in the study Now the final thing is, are we going to be asking any other questions about, of, about you? And I have to tell you this because it's really important. Because we are. We need to know some personal information from you. We need to know your name. Okay, so we need to know your name. I'll, I'll tell you why in a moment. We need to know 
how old you are. Okay? We will need to know where you live. And we need to know some basic health information. Why do we need to know this? Well, we need to know your name and your address so we can send you a Fitbit to you. So we can put it in the post and send it to you. We need to know your age because we are comparing people of different ages in the study. So we might have people who are 18, 19, 20, 30, 40 years old. So we want to compare people. So we need to know your age. And then we need to know your health because we have to make sure that you're healthy and healthy enough to take part in the study. But once the study is finished, once we have got all the data from everybody, we delete all this personal information. It no longer would exist with us. So the only way we will know who you are is by a code number. And we won't know what the code numbers are. So we won't be able to find your personal information. Nobody will. So all we will have is a code and how well you have done in the study. So what do you do now? Well, you can either, if you want to know more, you can either email me or get your mum and dad or your carer or your support worker or your friends to email me here at dan.gordon at aru.ac.uk if you want to find out some more. Or you can tick in the next box that you will find in this um, website to consent to be in the study. That means you agree to be in the study and it explains what you are going to do again. And if you agree to be in the study, we will then start sending you the information. So thank you very much for listening to me. I hope you get involved. If you've got any more questions to ask me, do. I've also sent another information pack that your mum and dad or your carers or your support workers can read through as well, which explains this a little bit in more detail in the written form. So hopefully we will hear from you soon and you'll be able to get involved in this really cool study.